guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Alright, back with another micro-econs market failure video on public goods, right? So this is going to be another cause of market failure that you need to know. Um, it is very, very straightforward, very simple to understand. So just bear with me. It's going to be a very, very quick video, I believe, um, on this part on public goods, right? So the definition of public goods is very simple. A public good is basically a good or service that is provided without profit. So it is a public good means that it has to be accessible to all members of society and is usually provided by the government okay but at times it could be by private firms so public goods are basically goods or services that are easily accessible to everyone and it essentially does not um does not require you to fork out any money in order to purchase this good um, or service right so it is also without um the without without profit so the two conditions for a good to be a public good okay, is that it has to firstly be non-excludable in consumption and secondly that it is non-rivalous in consumption, right? So we will um, take a look at what the definitions of these uh, two terms are, okay, your non-excludability and non-rivalous. So firstly, non-excludable, what does it mean? The definition by the book definition is that it is difficult, costly or impossible to exclude non-payers, so people who do not pay for this good or service, to actually enjoy this good or service. So it is extremely difficult, okay, you, it's very hard to exclude people from actually um, consuming and enjoying this good or service. So whenever you explain it, when it comes to essay writing, if you want a good explanation on what is something that is non-excludable, um, why does it lead to market failure? Okay, very simply because when there is no one who is willing to pay for the good or service, right? It is almost difficult. Uh, it is almost impossible. Okay, and it's very very difficult to charge someone for this good or service. What happens is they exposes it to a this thing called the free rider problem. So this free rider problem basically occurs uh, whereby those who benefit from the good or service do not actually have to pay for it. For it. So think of it like freeloading, right? You're essentially just um, consuming this good like a free, um, for free, right? And you're just riding along with this good or service and you're not actually paying anything for it. So as a result, there will be no effective demand. Effective demand meaning to say that like we've learned demand and supply. Um, demand is usually signaled um, by consumers' willingness to pay a certain price, but because in this case no one is willing to pay, there will be no demand at all, so there's no effective demand. Hence, your profit-seeking firms will actually not have an incentive to produce this good or service because there's no demand, meaning to say that because it acts as a signal, right? So that means there will be no supply as well since um, the producers tend to gain nothing from it, right? If there are no, no one who actually wants to demand for this product, why would a producer even produce it? There's no point at all in producing. So this results in this thing called a missing market, whereby this product or this good or service is completely missing from the market. So this is what leads to market failure. It's a form of market failure, uh, which is why the government will usually come in to produce it instead, um, be it through taxpayers' money um, or, or other means of other sort of funding. So that is what non-excludable means, and it's because of the free rider problem, whereby people just freeload this good or service. Hence, there's no effective demand, hence a missing market. So very, very simple. The next one is when um, a public good is non rivalrous in consumption. So the consumption of the good or service from one person does not reduce the amount available for others to consume. So an example of a public good which is non excludable and non rivalrous would be street lights, right? If one person stands under the street light, it does not mean that everyone else who is surrounding him um, won't receive that light, right? That means they all dim, they cannot see, they're all blinded, right? If one person stands under the street light, um, or be it 10 people standing under the street light, they all receive the same amount of lighting that they require in order for them to walk about the streets at night. So that is what we are talking about. When one person's consumption, when they consume this street light, it does not reduce the consumption of the street light for other people. So the explanation for this is also very simple. So non rivals okay, how does it lead to market failure? So once produced, additional consumers can consume it without reducing the amount for others. This is the definition. So hence, the marginal cost, the additional cost of providing the good for additional users will be zero. Right? It makes sense, right? Because um, the fact of the matter is that if you produce one street lamp, right, the additional cost of providing this good for an additional user it's going to be zero because you don't have to produce another street lamp just for another person to use. Right? This street lamp will be able to target every single person in that vicinity. So hence, the efficient price would be zero. And since the condition for allocative efficiency is P equals to MC, um, this means that basically there is allocative inefficiency that is being reached. Your 
price is going to be equal to zero because your marginal cost, the additional cost of producing an additional street lamp is going to be zero. Hence, since your allocative efficiency equation goes by P equals to MC, the price right, of producing these goods for people to actually purchase is also going to be zero. Okay, hence, the government will provide these goods for free and they will absorb the amount that's required to pay for these. Right? That's why your street lamps, um, fireworks, they are all basically um, usually sponsored uh, or they're paid for by the government. So I repeat again, for non rivals goods, one person's consumption does not reduce the amount available for other people to consume. Hence, the marginal cost of producing an additional um, good. Okay, that means, for example, a street light, additional street light for an additional person is not going to be required. So it's going to be equal to zero. And since we always aim to achieve allocative efficiency, which is P equals to MC, your marginal cost being zero would mean that your price would also be zero. Hence, the government would just provide these services and goods for free to the people instead. Alright, so examples of public goods okay, would be fireworks, public libraries, public benches, national defense, um, possibly, like I said, your street lights. These are all examples of public goods. Um, or that your park benches as well. Okay, these are all public goods that are provided by the government for the people. Okay, due to the issue of your non-excludability, which has got your free rider problem, hence a missing market, um, as well as your non-rivalrous consumption issue, which actually breeds um, an efficient price of zero, hence because of your allocated efficiency formula, because of the additional cost, which is going to be zero, of producing an additional good, the government will provide these services and goods for free. So very simple, right, this entire um, part on public goods. I think it's just super straightforward. If you're still unsure, you can always leave a question in the comment section. I will answer it. So very simple for this one. Just need to explain the concepts of non-excludable and non rivalrous in consumption in relation to these public goods. So when it comes to essay writing or it comes to any sort of question, you just need to explain the free rider problem as well as effective demand and then the allocated efficiency P goes to MC whereby the efficient price is going to be zero. Okay, and that would be all you need to do for explaining this part on public goods. So that is how it leads to market failure, um, essentially due to the missing markets that it actually creates. Hence, the government, in order to always maximize societal welfare um, and societal benefits, will have to step in to actually help to provide these goods and services. So that's all I have for this video. Okay, if you did enjoy or did learn something, be sure to give it a like. And as well as to subscribe to the channel, it really does help me out a lot. And um, if you have any questions, like I said before, you can just leave it in the comment section below and I'll answer them. If not, that's all I have for this part. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.